Okay, right. Now, because I went over time, okay, so we don't have a lot of time left for the practical session. Uh, so uh, what I do is that you have got these slides about challenges and solutions for working with older people in PAR project. I want to talk about everything. What I want to do is that to talk about challenges of working with older person in a PAR project and some of the solution that we can do in order to improve the situation because this will be a good example or a case study for you to start thinking about your about the group work that I said uh, for you. What I said for you is that the uh, we will think about if say you want to uh, the uh, implement or plan for a PAR project with say you know a, a group of homeless people what would be the challenges that you might face and what can you do in order to overcome the challenges so that's the example so we will separate into groups and i will get ayago and ja to help with that you know about the group but what i do is that give you a case study quickly okay so uh, that example from older person so that what we do so i will skip a few things about you know older person and things like that okay so bear with me i just go quickly i won't talk about this at all uh, we know that the uh, uh, older people tend not to be included in research okay because some people think that they are too old to participate they don't know anything and so on there are so many reasons which i won't talk about so what i do is that i go through a few things about involving all the person and the challenges that you might have okay in a power project so i will spend a bit of this and then i'll talk about the solution so uh, you remember what we have said uh, thus far from the beginning that sort of thing uh, the, of, of course in doing a piece of research it will have some challenges it doesn't matter which group uh, but when we talk about older person that sort of thing and particularly when they have other health issue or health problem yeah like dementia or a few other things how are you uh, what sort of thing that you might come across in using power uh, with older person uh, and older person tend not to the uh, uh, trust you as a researcher quite often because of their experiences or whatever that happened they don't really trust, trust people and certainly younger people a lot younger people they think that these young people don't know anything about us that sort of thing so they don't really trust you in that sense so lots of happen may uh, happen anyway one of the things that we might come across is the recruiting and also retaining how can we recruit all the person in our study it's very difficult to get older person to participate uh, particularly when the research project is oh, what is this you know that sort of thing uh, but if you use PAR you might find that they, uh, they might, are more likely to participate when you have some sort of innovative ways of doing things so that one of the thing recruitment okay how can you uh, allow them or make them see that you are they can take part in your research so you need to think a lot about recruiting once you have recruited them what about keeping them in the project because PA takes a lot of time okay all the people tend to uh, get tired very quickly uh, the uh, some have other health issues that take them away from the project so you can't expect them to participate fully in your project okay and they might have to go to see a doctor uh, and they might have to look after the grandchildren and so on or something like that so we can't sometimes we can't retain all the person in our project so recruiting is one thing retaining is another thing yeah so we i talk about that that the uh, it's hard uh, to uh, to recruit people certainly all the person from some group like ethnic minority groups they are very very suspicious about your research okay uh, and they are very skeptics about what this research can do for us you know that sort of thing so these are the things you have to think carefully five ways that you can recruit them and retain them so that's just one of the in the the, the, the challenge that you might uh, come across um, also the uh, uh, the time frame that you have and also personal motivation 
of the participant and the time. These are the things that can prevent people to take part in your research or maintain in your research. They might lose their interest or their motivation uh, if you ask them to do too much or it takes too long. Okay? Or you in expect them to involve in so many things. So they might not want to do that. Uh, commitment, because you know when we do PAR, it, it requires a lot of commitment from the participant or the person may not uh, want to do that or may not be able to do that either. So you see that that's why they might not say yes or they say yes and then they decided to leave your PAR project. So you come across these issues in, uh, in some projects. The uh, interest, different degrees of interest. Okay, so the uh, because we want people to become personal in personal involved in your in our power project, uh, and you might find that the uh, uh, some some older person will be more interested in in the project and in participation, but others may not. Okay, so how are you going to? you know, to stimulate people uh, to be interested in your project, uh, you can't expect that, okay? So it may happen, and that is the reason why people might want to leave your power project. So the interest may not be there, and some might be interested in more in doing lots of things, okay? In doing the research part, in data collection and so on, but other may not want to do that. Just too tiring, too much work, I might be interested in early during the dissemination process or something like that. So then that means that your participant cannot fully participate in your research. Yeah? So you have to cater for this sort of thing. Yeah? Different degrees of interest that may happen. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> and also the, the, the responsibility. Yeah, in the research project may be different and that part of this degree of interest. So here I want to give you the example from the gay and grey project. Okay, you see that the, uh, uh, because the project got both men and women, see this? Women wish to lead the research process but the men were interested in outreach work. See that? Different uh, level or different uh, interest that people might have. And so again, how you balance that? Okay, when some participant want to do this part, other want to do another part. So another issue, yeah, so another issue that you come across. The uh, level of involvement, I think I did say that before, that some people want to do a lot of work in the PAR project, other cannot uh, and will not. So again, they can't fully participate in your project. What are we going to do with this? Okay, because of their, you know, like demands and everything like that. So. I did say that before, uh, so I quickly go through this. So, level of involvement in PA, you can't expect everyone, older person, to be involved in the, in the research. The, um, here, what are that just an example? Okay, so, you know, in this project by Dale and Timoden, you see that some people spend a lot of time, extensive time during the data collection process. Some people just want to do a few hours and at different stage of the project as well. So another issue there, that another challenge is there that the, uh, we might see. So different involvement, yeah. Okay, uh, what else? Power control among participants uh, participant themselves, also that another issue there. Uh, the, uh, you, we need to think about the, uh, uh, the power and the involvement uh, of the participant. Again, we deal with the uh, different people and certain older persons, so that may be another issue. So that's what I mean by I go f uh, quickly, okay? So I won't talk about everything. Times, okay, time issues. The, uh, we require a lot of time from the participant, but for older person, a time-consuming research approach might be a problem for them. So the re reason, like similar to before, I said that, you know, like uh, they may not have enough time, they have to do other things and so on. They might be too tired to participate and so on. So because PA takes a lot of time, sometimes a year, two or three, that sort of thing. How can we expect this older person uh, to participate fully? So time is another thing that we might uh, come across. Okay. The, uh, uh, that just another example of the, uh, 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 the time issues. 
Okay, so again, I just skip that, won't talk too much. Empowerment, okay, remember this word? We talk about power and we said that we, uh, the process of power will empower people. Now, how can we ensure that everyone is empowered by the research? Even when we talk about normal, uh, not older person, uh, or, you know, other group of people. But when we talk about uh, older person, that sort of thing, Hmm, what do we mean by this empowerment and when is it going to happen, that sort of thing. So it can be a challenging, uh, challenging thing, you know, to empower a person, an older person with health issue in particular. So that's another problem that we might come across. It may not lead to empowerment empowerment in uh, all the community. So in, in this slide, you get some example about this sort of thing. Okay, so again, I just go to the, 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 the problem. So we, you can see that when we talk about power with older person as a case study, we have a few challenges there. Okay, time, uh, empowerment, the different level of interest and involvement and so on. Okay, so we do have things like that. But then as any project, we need to think about how can we do in order to help people to participate as fully as possible or to allow people to think that they are actually uh, an important part of the society that can help change the society. So we need to do that and, and that actually lead to empowerment, but then it may take a long time uh, for people to uh, to realize that they have been empowered. Okay, so what I'm do showing you now is what can actually be done in order to make it better in a way. All right, so just a few things. So we need to honor the, exp the lived experience and knowledge of older people. Normally, you know, like lots of younger people think that older people, you know, are useless. Okay, so we hear the word ageism, that sort of thing, that they don't know anything about new things like technology, they are hopeless and so on. So we think about older people in that way. And this is mainly in Western society. Uh, in the non-Western is another story, okay? So I won't touch on that, I just based on the general idea here. So we need to actually honor their lived experience. We have to believe that all the people bring a lot of perspective into the society because of their experiences, yeah? About their wisdom and everything else. So we try to honor that and we have to emphasize that in our project. That, you know, because you have uh, the wisdom, you have the knowledge, you have lots of things that uh, we can learn from you, younger generation can learn from you. So we need to honor the experience, live experience of people. Okay, and that is actually is a political tactic that can help them to participate in your research and retain in your research. So honoring their lived experience, emphasize that they are the most important member of the society and so on. You know, five ways that we can help them to, to believe that they are valuable uh, members of the society that we can learn from. The, uh, uh, the, um, okay, now, for some people who have health issues, their overall well-being, we have to prioritize that. Okay, so like older people uh, in a pro project, power project with older people with uh, dementia, that sort of thing, uh, we need to think about when can they participate in our power project. So here in this project, you might have to recruit people as early uh, within their illness as possible because that when they actually participate actively in your research. So when they get to the point that they can't uh, do a lot that sort of thing, then you might not want to involve them. Okay, so that's what I mean by think about the, the well-being the, and that part of this honoring their uh, lived experiences. So that's just the example of dementia. And so other health issues, you have to think about that too. Okay, so that a part of that. Okay, building trust. Remember I said that older people don't trust younger people. Uh, and I can see that why that sort of thing. Now we have to build that. Okay, really build that. And how you can do that? Participate, helping, all sort of thing that you can do. Uh, uh, you know, even with transport, uh, you know, all sort of thing. And that very similar to doing research with other marginalized, vulnerable group. We have to build trust with the participant before 
they, they will take part in your research. So certainly with older people, we have to make them trust us a lot more, okay, so that they can take part in our PAR project. So building trust, okay, the, uh, uh, what we can do is that not just only propose our own agenda, but their own agenda. They have to become the, uh, uh, an important part of the PAR, which is part of the PAR philosophy anyway, but emphasize that emphasize that really so that they know that this project is about our issue therefore we can do something about it so make sure you build trust with the participant first uh, okay the uh, here I think I said that you make connection with the participant and even thing like you know make some telephone calls uh, sending them thank you notes or Christmas cards, that sort of thing. It's just the way that you can build trust with your participant and of course they will continue to be on your project. Okay, that's just some example. Respect, we have to respect our older participant. Of course, this also applies to other uh, uh, research participants, but older person, remember I said that the uh, uh, older per person tend to be silent in the community and tend not to be valued in the so society. We need to emphasize that we respect them as the uh, person who have knowledge, who have all sort of things like that. So show them some sort of respect then they will know. And if they want, don't want to uh, participate fully in the research, respect that, their wish as well. Because remember I said that they, maybe because they are too tired to do things, they may not only just, you know, they may want, only just want to do a few hours of work, not the whole lot. They might participate in certain aspects, not the whole time, respect their wish as well. So do that. So our power or your power project, when it happened like that, it may not be a pure PAR project, but it is the thing that they are suitable for the person. Okay, so something like that won't be a problem. You just have to say it clearly uh, when you write things up. Okay, so what else that we can talk about? Respect here. Ah, the informed consent. Okay, and that part of our research anyway, we have to obtain the informed consent from all participants. What happened with the, uh, our research participants? Some people uh, may not, uh, they are illiterate, for example. So what do you do? Well, verbal consent, we can do that. We just ask them to say something that I'm happy to take part in your research. That's all that, that you need. You might record that, you might write it down, and I don't know, you can do a few things. Uh, and um, what else that, uh, yeah, it, it just depends on what they want to do, you know, they want to, they want to cite it, that's fine, but if they don't want to cite it, you just record your, your ways that they have been given, they have given you the consent to pa take part in this research, okay, so informed consent, obtaining informed consent is another thing that you can show respect to your participant. Here we talk about older person. Flexibilities, okay, that again, the, uh, really tie in with the level of interest and level of involvement as well that you might find that the, uh, today your older participant that you involve that sort of thing are too tired to do anything. So today no work, okay? Wait until tomorrow, okay? Or today they are too busy with looking after grandchildren. Fine, you know, do something else. So, be, be flexible about the needs and everything else of your older pa uh, participant, then of course they will continue in your project. So make sure you have your flexibility yeah, when you work with older person. Okay, uh, again that the uh, flexibility, I think that probably uh, yeah, time and traveling venue Okay, yeah, so be, be, be sure that the venue of the uh, way you do the data collection or meeting, that sort of thing, would suit your participants so that when you travel time and difficult traveling issue, that sort of thing, you need to think about. Uh, it may be that you have to pick them up if you want them to come in and do something uh, or you organize some sort of transportation for them that sort of thing, like to be flexible with the thing that may happen according to the, to the needs of your participant. Um, okay, this is very important. In par, normally and any par, things may not proceed as your anticipation or plan. 
Okay, it happens all the times, and uh, it can happen to other research, uh, uh, research uh, using other research methods too. But in part, you see that happen all the time. It may not. We think that data collection going to finish by then, but then it may be another five months before you get it done. That sort of thing because you collaborate with people, you work with people, and involve too many people, and of course with all the person because of their illness, because of other issues. It won't run on time. So these are the things the uh, you need to be aware and be flexible about that. But then you might run into the problem with your funding agencies. Okay, it's the time. But you know you have to think about that and find ways that you can uh, the uh, work with that. So okay, make sure that you be flexible with the with the with the time that you have. Now here. Uh, what else in here? Research setting, research agenda, and things like that. Okay, so another issue here. So be flexible about that. So flexibility is the main thing here. I want to say that. So don't pay attention to everything that about uh, on the slide. Okay, we have to acknowledge diversity of older people. We have to think that older people, as other human beings, are different. Uh, men, women, uh, older, older, and younger, older, that sort of thing may be different uh, and depend on their social class and so on. We, and also ethnic minority, we need to respect or think about the diversity. And these sort of thing, one, we know that then we will be more flexible, we will have more respect and so on. Those sort of things will follow. Okay, so acknowledge the diversity of all the people. Do not think that they're just old people and they're the same. No. Okay, you think uh, they are different in way, in any ways, in many ways, and so therefore acknowledge that. Now, for all the people, they may not know how to do research. They may not have any experience in doing research before, but they are happy to take part in your power project. So provide some training. And not, you don't have to train them everything. So that when the flexibility come in, that if they are interested more in helping you with data collection, then provide some training about data collection. Some people want to do the recruitment for you, then provide some sort of training about recruitment. So of course, if, some, if any of them want to take part in everything, also provide training. Because we can't be sure that the old person in our power project would know about how to do research. We can't. There might be some who have been a researcher and take part in that, so they might know. But we can't expect that, that everyone will. So provide some training. Now this provide some training is part of the power philosophy, isn't it? That people learn new skills and because of that then it helps with the uh, empowerment and emancipation. So. So provide that. Okay, we have to make sure that we uh, we provide some training. Uh, the um, I think that I don't need to say that. It's just some example here. So what we do is that the uh, what I can conclude is that when we use PA with any people, there are always challenges and there are always the uh, uh, unanticipated things that can happen. So as a researcher, we have to be more flexible, find ways that we can uh, find a solution that we can do in order to allow our project to be able to continue. So what I present you just some from, uh, from is the review of research that I have seen when they work with older person. The, uh, uh, but other groups, you might find that there are other challenges. Yeah, and then if we got those challenges, what do we do? Okay, so now this is what I'm going to get you to do. Okay, the uh, say you are designing a power project. Okay, on health or or and you can decide social issue among people from low socioeconomic background. Say in Asia, it can be anywhere. That sort of thing. Now, this power project on health and social issue, it can be on any issue like this. For example, things about breastfeeding, things like domestic violence, homelessness, mental illness, or living with chronic illness like breast cancer and HIV, say in one community. So you're going to do a power from poor background, but these are the issues that you're going to do your power. 
Okay. So I want you as a group to write down the key challenges to my, you may encounter in doing such a project. Then think about some way that you can overcome those challenges. And if you can make sure that the plan is more realistic and feasible, that would be good, not too abstract. Okay? And I'd like you as a group to present your idea to the class. So you send someone to, to, uh, uh, to present what you think the challenges will be and also what can you do to overcome the challenges. Now, the, uh, I get Ayoko to do, is that okay? You do the group. Now, you have the freedom of selecting any of this. Yeah? But, but, okay, the, the focus would be on poor or low socioeconomic groups of people. So that means poor people. Just do that way uh, quickly. But these are the things that you can select.